Hey everybody, it's Peter Bowen inviting you once again to join me for another installment in my series, The Great Philosophers at San Diego Oasis in the Grossmont Center. This coming Wednesday, April 3rd, 10 to 11.30, let's go to the heart of the 20th century, Paris, France, in the middle of the Nazi occupation, the great voices of existentialism, Jean-Paul Sartre and his longtime partner, Simone de Beauvoir, trying to find meaning in the wreckage of World War II. They are gonna change philosophy forever. This is a good one, I'll see you there. Hello, I want to invite you to my next class, which is gonna happen on April 2nd at the Mission Valley Library. We're gonna be talking about mindful eating. So how many times during the day you're eating and basically not paying attention? So we're gonna be talking on the importance of being present when you eat how to achieve that, also how to identify your hunger signals, and what are the benefits of mindful eating, which there's so many research studies that find mindful eating as one of the best tools that we can implement to live a healthier and longer life. So please join me. I look forward to seeing you. Hi, my name is Custa Dillon, and I spent almost 40 years with the National Park Service working in national parks all over the United States. I live here in San Diego now, and when I talk to people about national parks, many are surprised to learn that there are 39 parks in the national park system within a 500 mile drive of San Diego. Many of these places are well known, Sequoia National Park or Grand Canyon National Park, you see behind me where I used to live and work, but many are not as well known such as Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area, a place for hiking and biking, and where you can explore locations where many films and television shows were made, or the home of Eugene O'Neill, where he wrote some of his most famous works. We're gonna take a look at all 39 of these places, and we'll give you some hints for visiting them and for how you can find the best time to visit to avoid crowds. Now it's going to be a quick travel log, but we're going to give you the tools to explore these parks in depth on your own and plan your national park adventure nearby. Namaste everyone. My name is Hosanna Gilmore. I'd like to invite you to a new class at Oasis Grossman. Mondays 2.15 to 3.15 is a Hatha Yoga class. Hatha Yoga is a slower pace yoga where you hold the postures a little bit longer. You get to feel the stretch deeper into the muscle. You feel energized and feel also that you got a good workout. Hope to see you there. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade, toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hope and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers-in-arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. With this order of the day, on June 6, 1944, Dwight Eisenhower Supreme Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Force launched the greatest seaborne invasion in world history. Preceded by the insertion of 24,000 airborne troops shortly after midnight, over 156,000 American, British, and Canadian soldiers landed on the beaches of Normandy to establish a tenuous foothold that the German armed forces could not dislodge. I'm Blaine Davies. And next Monday, April 1st, at 10 a.m. at the new Rancho Bernardo Oasis, we'll discuss not only the D-Day invasion, but also the intense planning, the deception of the German leadership, and the heroism of the soldiers that made Operation Overlord the watershed event that less than a year later led to the total destruction of the tyrannical Nazi regime. This special offering is designed to deal with the question of are the Supreme Court justices just politicians who happen to wear black robes, or is something else going on? 
And I'll argue that there is some significant something else, no denying politics and ideology play a role, but so does legal reasoning and the proper view about the role of judges. So does group dynamics. There are a nine member body that has to put a majority together. Uh, so does anticipating the reaction of the public and the media and public officials. So I'll present judicial decision-making in this course as a multi-factor matrix that can be explained by looking at several different factors, and it'll make you a better consumer of Supreme Court news going forward. I hope you'll join me.